and welcome to vlog one for Spud Nicholson uh, 196584 for SAC 7108 Practical Techniques in Strength and Conditioning, Skill versus Capacity in the Weight Room. It's important to note that there is a fine line between skills and capacities with regards to weight room activities or any movement for that matter. With this in mind, I'll be highlighting issues with skills and capacities in three different weight room movements throughout the video before, before potential interventions are put into place to help the athletes move more efficiently. So the first athlete that I would like to use for this vlog will be demonstrating the back squat. Um, this athlete uh, struggles with the skill of the squat. So as we can see with the first rep, the athlete's um, initiation of the eccentric phase is a knee dominant movement pattern. So you can see that the knees are traveling forward in order to allow the athlete to drop into that squat position. If we just continue to watch the athlete squat, you'll then see that the forward lean is quite a heavy one. Um, and it looks as though the bar is forward of the base of support. If we allow the athlete to continue squatting, the depth isn't bad. So I think range of motion is um, potentially adequate to perform a squat. We just need to learn the skill uh, and, and get the idea of, of keeping the barbell over the base of support throughout the movement. One of the first drills I asked this athlete to do was a pole squat. So the cues that I uh, gave to the athlete were the feet needed to be slightly wider <clears throat> and I wanted the, the knee to track out over the foot. So as you can see here, the athlete's knee is over the ankle and they're no longer sort of creeping in as they were before. Using the uh, the upright of the rig to help support the position at the bottom and help the athlete balance and getting used to being uh, weighted onto the heels uh, I think it's a good cue just to try and drill this new movement pattern. The next drill was a little bit of a, a resistance band around the knees to uh, ask the athlete to go into an external rotation of the hip. This is just to make sure the knees are out in the most efficient place while driving the hips back at the same time just make sure that the athlete is now in a much better position as far as the initiation of the squat is concerned another drill for the initiation of the eccentric phase of the squat that i found was a good continuation of the first drill was to not just drive the knees out but to then squat to a target that was above parallel uh, and in a comfortable range for the athlete to sit into as you can see here the athlete is able to maintain that good spine position really good neutral shape <clears throat> and is quite comfortably sitting just above parallel now so there's no reason for me to hold the athlete back i think the capacity is good it was just the skill that needed to be learned now we can see with the start of this athlete's eccentric phase the initiation of the squat is now being driven with this hips back movement is therefore keeping the chest up nice and tall. Now we see if the athlete can follow this line all the way down and the finish position is far better than that of when it started. Spine straight up and down, gaze forward, potentially a lack of range of motion in the hamstrings and the glutes uh, which is stopping the athlete from squatting deeper. But I think with some focused work and some maybe some myofascial release, uh, we can probably find a better depth for this athlete. Now the next athlete that we have here is an athlete that struggles with the skill in the push press. As you can see, the angle of her elbows are very low, straight down. Uh, and therefore the, the dip and drive in order to generate that uh, upward force of the bar uh, isn't quite happening because there's a lot of forward lean going on. Um, as we see here, if we just let her keep moving, the elbows drop down every time the chest is quite low. 
she has good capacity overhead as you can see her straight up and down is very good all the way through so it, mobility was never an issue there but we just had to talk about how to make the uh, dip and drive a little bit more efficient one of the first drills that we went through was a dip and drive against the wall and I asked the athlete to maintain uh, contact with the back against the wall the whole time as you can see here she's dipping and driving back up with that contact on the wall another drill that was similar um, was getting as close to the wall as we can keeping the chest up without making too much contact with the wall now this was less for the chest position and more for what the knees were doing I wanted an external rotation of the hips so that knees were going out so that we were using the glutes to help generate some upward force and as you can see here she was able to do that and the knees are no longer moving forward but out into that externally rotated position. Another drill that I wanted the athlete to do was just a dip and drive with a kettlebell. Now this was just for her, for her elbow positioning just to stop her elbows from going low. I asked her to move the kettlebell a little bit away from the chest, dip down and support the weight. And as you can see here, her elbows have moved into a much better position. Not as high as it could be, but much better than the low position that they were in at the start of the section. Now when the athlete goes back to the barbell, you can see that the start position is better. The dip is straight up and down. We've got that uh, straight down, straight up movement going. The bar now moves straight up. She's able to receive the bar and dip immediately down back into another rep. The chest is no longer coming forward. She's staying straight up and down and the elbows are now in this really good position. We're here and we're here. Uh, so the skill was learned quite quickly and utilized quite well by this athlete. So the final athlete that I've chosen to use for this vlog is uh, an athlete that displays a distinct lack of ability in both the skill and the capacity of the deadlift. As you can see from their setup position, we have lost uh, the lumbar curve, the neutral spine is gone, uh, all the way from the hip up to the C-spine, that's gone as well, as the athlete's focus is forward rather than down uh, here, which is where it probably should be to make it a little bit more neutral. So one of the first drills that I gave the athlete was just to help him engage the thoracic spine and the scapulas. So some banded face pulls to help him engage those scaps. Uh, so we go for a, an approximation of the shoulder and then a pull in, uh, and this will help sort of carry forward onto the barbell hopefully a little bit of dynamic correspondence will help him maintain that thoracic neutral spine another drill to help the athlete uh, maintain the lumbar curve was helping him just with the initiation of the eccentric phase with the hips going back and the shoulder blades staying tight to hopefully help him maintain that lumbar curve and as you can see here if we were just to stop the video he finds this shape a little easier it probably even goes a little bit lower than that and we can actually maintain that neutral spine position the whole time which is great as discussed at the start of this athlete's videos um, we displayed a distinct lack of skill and capacity and the capacity here was the range of motion in the hamstrings uh, and the posterior chain generally so an immediate intervention for that was to just raise the bar up off the ground to help the athlete maintain a neutral spine throughout and as you can see here when the athlete goes down to the start position um, this neutral spine was was not only achieved but the angle in which the um, athlete could get into was was far greater therefore making the movement a little bit more efficient.